Good morning, dear saints, and happy Easter. Welcome to Thy Strong Word. Today is Thursday, April 18th in the year of our Lord, 2024, and day one of KFUO Radio's share On this program, we explore the Holy Scriptures, whereby God bespeaks us righteous and nourishes our faith. I'm Rev. Doug Gribbenaw, Mission Advocate here at KFUO Radio, filling in for my good friend, Pastor Phil Boo. He's the pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church in Laverne, Minnesota, but today he's asked me to step in and fill in. I've got big shoes to fill, I know. Today we will turn in our study and begin the, the big chunk in the Proverbs of Solomon, starting with the first part of chapter 10, looking at verses 1 through 12. Now, there's many ways to listen to KFUO Radio on the app, on the internet streaming, in smart speakers, or even catching this in a podcast form to listen to at your leisure, or even to listen to again. Joining me today is a good friend of mine. The, uh, oh, you know, I have to mention one thing first, because the Thy Strong Word is underwritten in part by a wonderful gift from our friends at Lutheran Heritage Foundation. Now, LHF translates, publishes, and distributes books that are Bible-based, Christ-centered, and Reformation-driven. And to learn more about the amazing work that they're doing, I invite you to check out their website, lhfmissions.org. Now, joining me today in our study of Proverbs chapter 10 is Rev. Jason Bredson, pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church in Sacramento, California. But, uh, brother, you're, you're away from home today, is that correct? Good morning, Pastor Gribna. I am away from my home, away from my congregation, away from my family. I serve as an Air Force Reserve chaplain. I am the individual mobilization augmentee to the wing chaplain at Hill Air Force Base in Ogden, Utah. So I'm out here for about a month. I'm wrapping it up next week, and I'll head back to the Good Saints of Trinity and to my wonderful family. Looking forward to getting back home, but it's been a privilege to be out here and serve. Uh, I do have to give your listeners a warning that um, we do have a fighter wing out here. They fly the F-35 uh, fifth generation fighter jet, and uh, they may be flying over at some point, and hopefully it won't be too noisy, but uh, national defense is a noisy endeavor. You know, I, I, it's a wonderful work that you're doing uh, to serve those airmen. And, uh, and really, chaplains in our armed services are, are a tremendous blessing. You know, I was a, a reservist with the, the Navy. And I, was, uh, I, st- I hung around with P3s, so uh, turboprop planes. They're not quite as noisy as an F-35. But, uh, you know, we get, it adds a little bit of realism to our study today, yes? Because here we are in the, in the midst of the world, and yet we are dealing with things of eternal worth. That is the very word of God. So thank you to your, to your saints over at, uh, at Trinity Lutheran Church for lending you out uh, to care for and serve our airmen in the United States Air Force. I think they really appreciate the opportunity to give back to our nation and to share the gospel in this unique setting. I thank you for your service and uh, your recognition that, um, that the work that our chaplains do is good and God blessed. And uh, it's great. It's just wonderful to have the support of all of our people in the Synod. Uh, I have to tell you, talking to our other chaplains out here and throughout my life in the Air Force Reserve, I need to give a shout out to our uh, ministry to the Armed Forces Board with Synod. Chaplain Craig Mueller and Chaplain Steve Hokana are bar none, the best endorsers in the uh, Department of Defense, and they are a gift to our chaplains and to our church body. Thank you, gentlemen. And you know, brother, not to uh, not to delay our study of Proverbs, but we sometimes use internal language, right? The things that you and I all know about, but what does it mean to be an endorser? And, and what is this life in the chaplaincy like for our listeners out there? Yeah, good question. So, um, Uh, In many respects, we as chaplains have 
two chains of command. We have the military chain of command, of course, that we answer to, but then also we answer to our church body. We are bound by our subscription to the uh, Lutheran confessions and the Holy Scriptures, and we maintain that even in uniform. And uh, in order to serve as a chaplain, we have to be endorsed by a Department of Defense-recognized religious body for us, obviously, that is the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and specifically the Ministry to the Armed Forces within Synod. So yeah, that's the organization I'm referring to. Thank you for seeking clarification. Well, you know, I remember my time in the Navy. Everything was an acronym, and it took me a long time to get up to speed. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> well, you know, as, as we look to now this, this, what we would say maybe the quintessential Proverbs of, of the book of Proverbs, the Proverbs of Solomon, in chapter 10, you know, we're, we're dealing with, with pieces of Scripture that that are maybe one or two sentences long, just back to back, over and over. It's it's those little words of wisdom, right? And, and we remember, you know, Solomon is well known for for being blessed by God with tremendous wisdom, uh, gifted to him by the Holy Spirit, of course. And so, in in these first few uh, verses today, verses one through twelve, we're going to be wrestling with this sort of brief. Uh, uh, scripture that goes one to one, uh, a compare and contrast, a sort of left hand, right hand. Let's look at these two things together, and uh, we're really blessed to have you with us today to guide us through that, brother. Would you like to open our time together with a word of prayer? Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. We pray, gracious and holy Father. Thank you for bringing us together today around your word and the opportunity to engage it in study, engage you in study. We certainly pray, as Solomon did, for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray that as Pastor Boo and his family are not with us today, uh, but with their own family, that you would grant them the grace and mercy and the joy and hope of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That also grants us hope in uh, our own resurrection, even as they grieve the passing of his mom. Bless and keep us in our study today, according to your promise. You are faithful to your promises, and we are ever grateful. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, brother, would you, um, as you've studied this with greater depth than I, uh, would you give us sort of a, a snapshot overview of maybe your first impressions of wrestling with Proverbs chapter 10, verses 1 through 12? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So in contrast to what uh, the study has provided before in the previous shows, in chapters 1 through 9, you you had longer snippets of teaching that Solomon did, and he really uh, associated them, that there were 10 addresses from Solomon to his son, and they very much mirrored the teaching of the Ten Commandments. Now, in the next several chapters, uh, Solomon is going to offer much shorter, typically within two lines, and typically in a contrasting manner, wise and fool, wisdom and foolishness, um, how to move forward as righteous uh, individuals, both in a civil righteousness uh, understanding and fulfillment of the law. How do you? How do you? um, how do you live righteously, but also as those who have been made righteous by Yahweh himself, how uh, then do we live out our lives? So um, so really, it, it's m- maybe a little bit more approachable than what we've had, but certainly no less wise. The, the verses that we have today... Solomon hearkens back to that beautiful woman wisdom that we were introduced to in chapter 9 and her invitation to the banquet. Um, again, the, these first five verses that we're going to look at, chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, they offer an antithetical parallelism or uh, an over and against teaching, as it were, of the wise son versus the foolish son. And it really does serve as an introduction to the righteous living that much of the um, remaining Proverbs throughout the next several chapters will look at. Um, you know, brother, I think—oh, we'll, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. 
No, no, please. Well, I was going to say you know, that that is the wonder of of the of really the book of Proverbs, but all of Holy Scripture is there is tremendous practical wisdom in in His Word uh, that that guards us from the dangers of this life, but but there is always underneath it uh, the the broader wisdom of God uh, that is calling us out of out of darkness, out of sin. To live in His light, in in the righteousness that we are given in Christ Jesus, and that righteousness that's enlivened by the Holy Spirit, you know, who's sometimes called right the uh, Holy Wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Brother Bradson, I'll uh, I'll read us from God's Word in Proverbs chapter ten, verses one through five, and then we'll we'll wrestle with that a bit. The Proverbs of Solomon: A wise son makes a glad father. But a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. And thus ends our section of verses 1 through 5. So as you'd mentioned, brother, it really is sort of quick snippets of wisdom, this versus that. So uh, what is it we're, we're wrestling with here in these first five verses? What we have before us really is, uh, again, looking at the righteousness that God gives and how we play that out in our lives. I'm, I think kind of in creedal terms, the first, second, and third article, and the righteous over and against the wicked, the, that would reflect more of a second article um, gift of God in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But then there's first article truths that uh, really come to the fore here at uh, Hill, if you want to uh, have the F-35 fly well and correctly, who do you talk to? You talk to the ones who built the jet, Northrop Grumman, or you talk to the maintainers in uniform who know how the jet flies best. And uh, those are really first article truths, and we have the Ten Commandments that guide us in that. But uh, But then we also have the gift of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and our baptism into Him, which grants us that righteousness in such great abundance. You're right. And, and when you say first article and second article, we're, we're really talking about our creed, right? The first article gifts being that first article of, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. And then, of course, the second article dealing with the second person of the Trinity, uh, the Son, in whom we are made righteous. And I remember in seminary, they talk about first article, second article gifts. And at first, I, I had to sit around and wonder what they meant. And then it finally dawned on me. So if you're sitting at home having that, that question as well, uh, you're in good company. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The creeds that offer us a, a great uh, map work for uh, our life in Christ. Amen. So, and, and once again, we, we have this, this language of, of speaking to a son. And of course, that it's not just that this wisdom is only for, for, for young men or even older men, right? But this is for all of us, right? Because Solomon is, is writing and addressing this to, well, to his son. So in the immediate context there is he's talking to them. But really, this wisdom is, is for each and every one of us. Absolutely. Um, you see here, uh, the the foolish son really is the grief of his mother, while the contrast of the, um, the wise son making his father glad. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, does offer a similar thought in relation to his heavenly father, right? In Matthew 5, let your light so shine before all people that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And I think really, as we look at verse one here, that's Jesus is grasping hold of this proverb and reflecting it in an eternal sense as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I hadn't thought of that. So that's a beautiful thought. I did sort of struggle. I thought to myself, it's strange, you know, but 
it sort of makes a, a practical worldly sense. You know, when you when you do things, you make your father proud, right? But if you if you're out there doing doing things you shouldn't do, uh, you know, the the most important thing is that it makes your mom sad. And I thought that was that was yeah. interesting that Solomon sort of highlights that reality. It really is. It's great, isn't it? Uh, and uh, the the contrast in language is really worth noting. The foolish, or a, uh, the, the foolish son really is the grief of his mother. It's 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 just this sadness, this burden that she bears, uh, and that both parents bear. But the wisdom of the son it brings great joy to the father and obviously to the mother as well. Yeah. Um, shout out to my own kids who. Uh, at 10 and 12, Ellie and Lucas are both um, showing forth the wisdom of God in Jesus, and I thank God for it. Amen. They really are a, a, a source of gladness and joy to me. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's uh, travel in again to uh, verse 2 now with uh, the Lord does not let the righteous go hungry. Oh, no, excuse me, treasures. <laughs> treasures gained by wickedness do not profit. That, that should be obvious to us. Uh, but righteousness delivers from death. Now, that's a strange little twist. It, it really is. And I just have to say, how often do we get to say filthy lucre in our society today? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Treasures gained by wickedness, the um, the the undue taking up of what is not ours uh, really brings to nothing, both in a present and eternal sense. Amen. And there, the the righteousness truly does deliver from death, both temporally and eternally. Um, this here is where the righteousness takes on the um, imputed righteousness of God granting to his people and delivering from death. Um, thanks be to God. <laughs> because, you know, so often we, we are tempted by the things of this world, and a quick and easy gain is, is always a very present temptation. And it, it's a good reminder for us to keep our eyes well, looking beyond the things of this world, you know, the things that moth, moths can eat and, and rust can destroy, and really look at true treasures that lie beyond just the, the baubles of, uh, of this created world. Oh, yes, there is plenty to distract us, that is for sure. Um, and uh, we do give in all too often, but um, again, blessed by God and His righteousness, we are delivered from that death, and um, both here in the present and for all of eternity. Yeah, and you know, this side of glory, we 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 do struggle. You know, the, the man in the fall, right? By the work of the field, the sweat of your brow, and the toil of the earth, you'll bring forth your food. And yet, in verse three, uh, we have a, a loving promise from God too. Yeah, he takes care of us, doesn't he? And you look back at the Sermon on the Mount as well, and uh, there, the promises of provision certainly are there as well. He does give us our daily bread, and he um, he promises to thwart the craving of the wicked. I think it's it's fair to say that there is a sense in which this gets fulfilled um, at the return of Jesus in its final and full sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the promise remains true for us today as well. And, you know, I, I'm not sure if, if you saw this, but I, the the simul justus et peccator, right, you know, the, the both saint and sinner in verse 3 here, I, I, I was seeing maybe a little bit of the old man and the new man, because, you know, by, by God's grace, some of the cravings of thy old man and me, uh, you know, the Lord has thwarted and kept me from. Uh, when in my indiscretion of youth, I perhaps pursued them. Uh, did you see a similar uh, reflection there? Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, the promise of daily bread goes with the Word as well, doesn't it? Uh, the Word of God comes to us uh, fully and drowns the old Adam daily in repentance and faith and raises him to newness of life. And um, I think I think the, the Word of God uh, it certainly does bless and keep us in this life, absolutely, and absolutely in the life to come. 
Yeah, you know, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yeah. Truly. And yet there is a, a, a way in which the Lord delivers us these, these first article gifts, right? The things like house and home and shoes and drink and, and all that stuff that Luther <laughs> illuminates in our catechism. And, I, and I'm sort of seeing that here in verse 4 in a, in a sort of practical reality, too. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. What, what do we take of this? I think the irony of language here is really fascinating Hands that do absolutely nothing are actually creating something. Right. Sadly, right. Yeah, sadly, they're creating poverty. Uh, so, you know, as we, as we sit around and do nothing, we are actually doing work. It's just not a healthy or beneficial work for ourselves, our family, nor anybody in society. But as we do go about good, the, the good work that God has prepared for us in our vocations, in our families, in our congregations, um, he makes us rich. And certainly uh, that it takes on a uh, temporal and material aspect, but it also takes on a, a, the sense in which God gives us our daily bread in the Word of God. And that is, as we don't live by bread alone, he... Um, he provides for us that word. Right. And the riches we're looking at here are, are not just the, the immediate uh, created world kind of things, but uh, the, the riches that, that transcend. Yes. Pastor Grimnock, can I uh, offer a, a real, uh, to our listeners as we're going through the share a a way that this happens through the gifts of your listeners Um I had the opportunity to have the weekend off this past weekend, and I drove down to southern Utah to a very rural part of the world that is very beautiful in nature and went to a national park. And I attended a very small Missouri Synod congregation that had no pastor, and it was an elder-led service, and the elder was a young father. He had two very young children, and he was up leading the service of matins, and his children were sitting there in the pew and, and being very well behaved. And I had the opportunity to go up to him after the service and really um, attempt to encourage him in his life of faith and let him know how refreshing it is for me as a pastor to see a young man and a young father really take to heart his call to be a godly presence in the home. And he actually, uh, he thanked me for that, but he spoke of the work of KFUO and other organizations as being very instrumental in his life of faith up to that point and even moving forward. So um, all you listeners out there, the good work that you are doing uh, really is bearing much fruit and um I know, uh, I know Pastor Gribna is uh, probably very thankful for the work that you all provide. Amen. And you know, brother, that's a wonderful transition. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. These are the voices of young Lutherans in Mexico City, children who are excited to learn more about their Savior, Jesus. But they need our help, because good Lutheran books for kids in the Spanish language are in short supply in Mexico. To learn how you can help tell Spanish-speaking kids everywhere about Jesus in a language they can understand, go to the Lutheran Heritage Foundation website at lhfmissions.org forward slash Juan 316.
We are back with another segment in Thy Strong Word, wrestling with the Word of God in Proverbs chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. I'm Reverend Doug Gribbenoff, filling in for Pastor Boo today with my wonderful guest, uh, Reverend Jason Bredesen out of Trinity Lutheran Church in Sacramento, California, though he is serving our airmen in the United States Air Force today. Uh, Brother Bredesen, we, we, we have verse 5 yet to tackle, and then we'll, and then we'll go through I know the big chunk, 6 through 12. Uh, but verse 5 says, He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Uh, so uh, maybe this is a good intro for the next set of verses, but uh, what what are your thoughts on verse 5? I think our, uh, our uh, state, or our... Um are saying strike while the iron is hot is apropos here, Ooh. right? Work when the fields are ripe. If, um, if it's harvest season, get out and harvest. Uh, if, um, if you are in the midst of the summer months and you're out plowing the fields and tilling the ground and planting the seeds and all of that, you don't want to let, to let the harvest go to waste after all that good and hard work. Well, and you know, there, there is, I, I've never been a farmer myself. Uh, I grew up in Denver, Colorado, I mean, Cowtown, but I was a, I was a city boy. Uh, but one thing I know is that when you aren't there at the harvest, you know, it's a finite window. If you miss that window, it, it, it's done. And, and you have to wait another year for, for the next crop to come in. And say. So there really is this urgency and an urgency for, for us uh, as as the workers in this harvest field, right? Didn't our Lord talk about the harvest? He did, yeah. And uh, that verse uh, came to my mind as well, that uh, the harvest is definitely plentiful. I can tell you, serving here, the airmen at Hill, the, the airmen in the Air Force, and throughout our Department of Defense and in the community of Sacramento, oh boy, the fields are ripe for harvest. And uh, our prayers are sought by our Lord to raise up a workers for the harvest. Um, so, yeah, let's do it. Let's pray. Amen. Let's pray that yeah. the Lord raises up workers for the harvest. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do a little, little drop with the initiative here in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, of the Set Apart to Serve, right? Uh, and, and there's a website on lcms.org for those of you who are considering a work vocation in the church, uh, pastors, deaconesses, uh, directors of Christian education, all the like. And so you can visit lcms.org and search for Set Apart to Serve. Uh, it is a wonderful blessing to serve in in the Lord's ministry. And uh, I didn't expect myself to be here. You know, I was a second career fellow, but uh, I could not be happier uh, with where the Lord has, has called me to be in this new vocation. So I hope you check it out, lcms.org, search for Set Apart to Serve. Yeah, and so, all vocations are blessed by God, amen. all noble vocations. But there is something truly blessed to be the, the mouthpiece of God, the gift of God to his people and to the community. Um, and certainly not without its challenges, but uh, all vocations have their challenges. Amen. Any, uh, any folks out there who are considering a a calling into church work, I yeah. do really strongly encourage you to look into it. Talk to your pastors, talk to others, and uh, pray that the Lord of the harvest would raise up workers for the harvest. Amen. And, and you're right to point out that the, the Lord gives us our vocations, no matter what that is. Uh, you know, for, for me, my favorite vocation is being a father, right? <laughs> but yeah, I have many other then, vocations, too. But wherever we are, you know, the Lord just asks you know, and and in fact, the the Holy Spirit, you know, says, "Be diligent, right? Uh, do the work the Lord has given you, and, and in so doing, bring glory to His name, even if it's changing a diaper in the middle of the night or or un, unclogging a stuck toilet." Uh, to, you know, that these these are good works. Amen. Well, let's uh, hear God's word in verses six through twelve here in Proverbs chapter ten, beginning in verse six. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Whoever winks the eye causes trouble. But a babbling fool will come to ruin. 
The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Thus ends the verses for our study today. And uh, boy, this is a great section. So we'll, we'll pick up with verse 6. You know, blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. And if I remember, as we're reading through this, that, that conceals violence, that's echoed again later, too. It's going to show up in verse 11. Yeah, and uh, it really is true, right? Um, and the, the, the winking, the babbling, the just the negativity that... Um, a wicked mouth can bring to life. It, it 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 frustrates life, and it's it just leaves you feeling icky. Um, and but, you know what? I, I was thinking of you know like like the wicked, right? You know, so the bad guy in the movies. Sometimes yeah. he's a smooth talker, and he's dressed so sharp, and and you know by all worldly appearances, he's the good guy. And, and his words, kind of like the adulteress in the previous chapters here in Proverbs, you know, they drip with honey. But but behind that, the truth of what this villain, this wicked one is doing in the movie is, you know, this is the bad guy. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, so that, yeah, that mouth of that wicked, it can conceal, it can hide this violence. And that really is what, what wickedness is, is it, it's violence, an attack on, on the neighbor, an attack on the self, an attack on God. It is that enmity mm-hmm. that... Uh, that that beset everything in the fall of Adam. Yes. And then you look at the blessings that crown your head with righteousness. Um, I, I just see that such great beauty in this contrast. Yeah. Wickedness. It, it, yeah, like I said, it just leaves a yucky taste in your mouth, but the blessings crown our heads. Yeah. And I think then we have this, this sort of, uh, the the sort of cause and effect with you know, this reflection then in verse 7, the memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. <laughs> we all know people who just kind of make us, again, get get that creepy feeling about us, and, and yet uh, we all know people who really reflect the righteousness of God in Jesus, and they're, they're they're just a joy to be around. Their memory lasts well beyond their years, and uh, it is truly a blessing to um, to live with the righteous. Uh, and you just get that yucky feeling when you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. I'll be honest, I couldn't help but think of Harry Potter with, you know, he who shall not be named, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, we remember the names and we celebrate the names like of the saints of old, right? Uh, I mean, we, you, in the Lutheran Church, Missouri, we, we do not pray to the saints, right? No, but but we do look to them as wonderful examples of the way of our life. And in fact, our day sponsors, so many of the day sponsors here on KFUO are remembering the wonderful life of faith of, of, of you know, grandmas and grandpas, of aunts, of, of neighbors, people who are an inspiration for us who are yet walking uh, this path unto eternal glory. So it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. Yeah, the, the name of the wicked will rot, but we remember with blessing the memory of those righteous. You know, we're going to actually take uh, uh, the next verse here. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. And I remember we've had that word fool, and it's occurred in previous chapters as well. It's a really sort of loaded word in, in the Hebrew. You know, Pastor Gribbenov, this is just one of, as I've looked at this, this is one of my favorite uh, verses that we have here in our study today. I didn't really spend a lot of time on the word fool. Um, so maybe you can speak to that. Well, certainly, you know, uh, I, I was a guest. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting on the other side of the microphone just a day ago. You know, that that word "fool." It, it's not just someone who's unintelligent or anything, but the, but a fool is really one who's sort of set in opposition to and 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 makes efforts to undo the good things around them. Uh, it, it, what God would really sort of decry is, as a fool. You know, you fool, you're undoing good things. You're working against yourself. You're working against me. Um, but yeah, this this also, this verse here reminds me of the, the theme verse of KFUO Radio, right? It's that faith comes by hearing, right? And hearing the word of Christ. Yeah. 
And that's what we have there, right? In, in, in the start, the first part of verse 8, the wise of heart will receive commandments. Yeah, and this is really where, where I looked, uh, the, um, the reception of commandments. Uh, and here you can really see the work of God in the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words of God, right? Mm-hmm. The Hebrew, Daver, um, the Ten Words of God, which we have uh, referred to as commandments. Yeah. They're divine instruction, and they... They contrast very clearly with the idle chatter, the babbling of the fool. So this verse, in my mind, in my reading, really asks us, who are we listening to? Amen. Are we listening to the idle chatter of the fool who, as you uh, reflect, and I love it, sets himself against God? Or are we listening to the divine word of God? Now, brother, we were we were sitting here in the midst of the last section of Proverbs chapter ten. Uh, we were wrestling with six through twelve, uh, but I believe we were we were talking with verse eight here, and, and you mentioned this was one of your favorite verses here, um, and, and so I thought I'd, I'd maybe come back to that because I, I think I was just bold right on by that. <laughs> so, what what what, uh, what what is it about verse eight that really attracts you? Well, I think uh, really uh, again it's. Who are you listening to? Are you are you listening to the babbling fool, the idle chatter, or are you listening to God? The wise heart will receive the word of God. The wise heart will receive commandments. Uh, we know the Ten Commandments are what are referred to as the Ten Words of God, and certainly the Word of God in its fullness is very clear. So to ask ourselves the question, who, who is it that we are listening to? Are we listening to the babbling fools? If we are, it'll all come to ruin. But if we are listening to the divine instruction, the Word of God, the Holy Word of God, um, we will show ourselves to be wise of heart. And you know, it really moves us right into verse 9 here. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Boy, that's that's a little convicting uh, with the old Adam and me, right? Oh, definitely. And certainly we all know what it's like to be the, the target of false accusations. Um, but if we do walk with integrity, we can hold our heads high and we'll, we can rejoice that the truth will come out. And even if it doesn't come out in this life, at the return of Christ, all all wrongs will be made right, and the truth will come out. Uh, certainly, Jesus was one who was falsely accused uh, and paid the price for it. Of course, he rose from the dead, thanks be to God, for that uh, gives us the opportunity to walk in integrity um, as he makes us righteous in his own blood. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I was I was wrestling with here was was this whole thing of being found out, and and I was thinking to myself, not just you know your lies being uncovered on the last day, right? You know when when everything's out there in the open and there's no hiding it, <laughs> but you know, I was thinking of maybe as as a, maybe a foolish one walking in these crooked ways. I've made my way crooked, and now I'm found out. I'm discovered, right? In in a vulnerable mm-hmm. place. And I was thinking, you know, kind of like a traveler being found out by the robbers and being attacked or Satan, you know, mm-hmm. finally snapping that trap shut because you've been a fool and following these crooked ways. Um, and I'm not sure that the Hebrew really really conveys that. And I'm not sure if you saw that or not, but. But I was I was seeing it. But I thought, wow, you know, when when I do stupid things, um, I I am found out. I'm made vulnerable and and not secure. Yeah. Well, the the truth of um, the New Testament teaching: be sure your sin will find you out. Right. That's Amen. A pretty dire warning. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you know, and, and verse ten. Um, I know we're we're talking about winking, and it's not like the playful thing which I do. And you know, you tell a bad joke like, uh, "Oh, um, yeah, oh, why why couldn't the bicycle stay upright because it was too tired?" Right? You know, <laughs> and, and so you wink with the bad joke. That's not the kind of winking we're talking about. But whoever no. winks the eye causes trouble, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. We don't have a, a, a good and a bad sort of comparison. We just have a doubling down here in, in verse 10. 
Yeah, and you're right. The the winking that that Solomon offers us here is in whenever it comes up in Proverbs, it's always negative. It's always kind of that uh, evil scheming um, that that uh, the wicked engage in, uh, and then you get back to the the mouth. The babbling fool comes up again, right. uh, and the same same issue comes forward to him. He comes to ruin, or and all that he, the babbling fool endeavors comes to ruin. Yeah, and then of course the, the, the this is sort of that opposite now in verse eleven. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. That's that phrase we've heard again too reflected. Yeah, the 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 fountain of life. Um, you know, Jesus obviously refers to this in John. I think it's chapter seven, where uh, out of um, out of the righteous will flow streams of living waters. Yeah, living water. Of Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. And 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 He gives. This is this is what the Lord promises, right? You know, if whoever asks yeah. from Me, I will give the water of life. Right. Um, yes. Yep. Yeah, and so the mouth and of the righteous, it, we're filled with with what you know, with with this this word of God, this wisdom, right, <laughs> that, that is so yeah. transcendent. Absolutely, I love the imagery of the fountain too, especially in the Holy Land where it's just arid, it's dry. Coming out here to Utah, mm. I drove across the state of Nevada, and God bless our listeners in Nevada. They live in the midst of an arid climate, and um, you think about a fountain springing up in the midst of uh, just this, this life-giving water that flows out of arid ground, and it truly is, when you think about it in that perspective, um, really becomes clear. There is no life in the desert or anywhere without a fountain of water. Amen. And there's no life in the in this desert, this desert of sin, uh, apart from that that river of life that is that is Christ Jesus. Truly, really? yeah, yeah. Well, let's tackle on verse twelve. Kind of bring this little section to a close, and then reflect on what we've learned today. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. I think it's a wonderful way to end this section. Oh, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, I I hear very clearly First Peter four eight love covers a multitude of sins right or James five twenty um, that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Amen. And you know it, it is that that and a, and a word spoken in 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 the heat of passion uh, it it just injures <laughs> it kills um, and it and it really is a and a wonderful thing, especially I found that the ones we love, the ones we're closest to, are the ones that we often can't hurt the most, right? Because we, mm-hmm. we we sort of feel like we have this liberty, this, you know, we, we can do whatever we want, you know, like with moms and dads, little little kids, right? You know, I hate you, right, says the teenager because they hate everything all the time, right? But they don't <laughs> actually hate their mom and dad, but they're, they're, they're sort of free to say that. And, and sometimes, you know, especially in, in some of the, uh, the, the impeccatory psalms, you know, we're, we're just giving voice to our frustration with God. You know, we're pounding against his breast and, and crying and just letting the anger out because his love covers that and, and, and just lets it go in a safe way. Right. And then, yeah. and, then and then restore it. And that wonderful relationship of love in the Christian church uh, you know, we see with mothers yeah. and fathers and, and siblings, you know, that. That when we do sin, and we do, we often sin every day, uh, and we hurt, but yet then that love is, it covers it, it heals it, right? So that love we have, and then of course the love of Christ, and it gives us a chance yes. then uh, to to forgive, right? That's sort of the big thing, right? Yeah, so here is the, the beauty of this verse. It's taken up in the Apology to the Augsburg Confession in the fourth article on justification, um, and and the, it it really lays it out very clearly that and it speaks of God's redeeming love for us, right? That's justification. That Amen. is uh, the doctrine on which the church stands or falls. And then the the apology on the fourth article really shows forth that 
this love of God, this great, beautiful, justifying, redeeming love of God allows you and I to love each other. Amen. Right? John says in his epistle, we love because he first loved us. That's right. All right, I have a challenge for you, brother. We have about a minute left. Uh, you want to wrap it all up with a bow? <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So final thoughts, brother, on Proverbs 10, 1 through 12. Oh, man. You all are righteous by uh, grace in our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, hear the word of God that speaks over you today. And they are the blessings on your head, the crown of righteousness. And shy away from the wicked. Amen. God be, may it be so. Hey, I'd like to thank my guest, Reverend Jason Fredson, pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church in Sacramento, California. Brother, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, sir. All right. And listeners at home, brothers and sisters, tune in again tomorrow. Part two of Proverbs chapter 10. It's going to be through 24 of Proverbs chapter 10 with guest host, uh, Reverend David Bo- Boyce Clare, pastor of our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Overland, Missouri. Until then, God's peace and blessings be with all of you as we pray, Father, keep us in thy strong word. 